Welcome. Um, Peter Conway and myself are going to talk to you about a recent project, or should I say three projects, um, because it was actually um, across three different castles, but, but bundled together as one project by Galway County Council, uh, City Council. Um, it, we were actually first, we first penned it uh, for the design work back in 2019, um, and then we filled out various um, commissioning letters and things like that in early 2020, and we all know what happened then. Um, so our actual initial assessment didn't happen until June 2020, after we everybody had got themselves you know, fallen out onto the floor and then got themselves up uh, with their masks on and um, got off to site. Um, it, it, when I come back at this project, I just think it was actually probably the highlight of my COVID times, um, because it actually ran, um, once we got going, ran um, really smoothly. So we commenced the initial assessments in 2020. Um, and we actually completed uh, the repair works at the end of 2021. So it wasn't wasn't bad in terms of time scale. Um, and we were part of a team, uh, so core consulting engineers were part of a team led by 7L architects. Um, and the, all of these buildings are national monuments. Um, as I said, the client was Galway City Council. Um, also involved was um, Aegis um, Archaeology um, and Austin Ready and Company um, Quantity Surveyors. Um, as part of the design team. Um, none of these buildings have roofs and they all suffer from extensive loss of fabric um, from whole walls to significant erosion of mortar from the core of the walls. Uh, walls. Um, and I'd like to also mention at this stage while we've got this slide up, um, uh, the two main players in Goy City Council, Anne-Marie Cusack and Jim Higgins, who um, as a client body gave us a wonderful um, steer and um, uh, assistance and backup on this project. Um, let me just go to the next slide. So this just shows the location of the three castles. Um, I'm actually going to talk about them, introduce them um, in the sequence in which they actually progressed through site works, um, just because then you'll get an overview of each building um, as a building as opposed to just talking about the design and then not talking about all the construction. Um, so we're kind of telling the story building by building. Um, and then and Peter and myself will, will um, flip back and, and forth um, in giving the presentation. Um, so there's there's the first one we actually worked on on site is um, Tyrolan uh, Castle, um, sometimes known as Terryland Castle. Um, and then we went on to Merlin Castle, which um, was this one here. Um, and then we, um, the last one we looked at was Merlin. Um, the total um, spend um, across the three castles was in the order of um, 800,000 exvat. Um, and um, yeah, we were given 60 weeks in our tender documents from start of design work to completion of the actual works on site. Um, but as I said, COVID kind of came along and um, wouldn't say made a mess, but but stretched and pulled the program around a bit. Um, so we'll start with Tyrolin. Um, and this is a 17th century um, fortified house as opposed to a castle. So you can see it has you know various window fenestration at lower levels. Um, it um, it was burnt down um, by the English uh, the Irish garrison sorry uh, during the siege of Galway in 1691, um, and it's been derelict and roofless and eroding ever since. And then the construction of the um, N6 um, Quinton Terry road bridge over the Corrib also um, led to the erosion of the domain um, uh, here, um, so that the, the the actual domain of the castle would have extended um, way back across the road as well. Um, and the southern end, uh, southern gable of the building um, uh, was actually compromised at that stage. But what it does do, um, the bridge and the road being there, is it puts this castle firmly in public view. Um, and it's not been in a great state, as you can see by the left hand picture, for many, many years. And um, was a bit of an eyesore and a den for needles and beer drinking and all sorts of things, um, which I'm sure Peter will testify to. Um, so um, this is, I'm sorry about all the scribbles, but this is kind of how we start our, our um, assessment process, obviously getting to site, um, getting to site hopefully with some drawings to hand, it always helps. If not, then we, we sketch um, as, as we go through it. We also had some previous um, reports um, and then we, we also had the, the bones of a laser scan 
and we'd kind of clipped some sections and things like that before uh, we went to site. So here you can see um, the laser scan by um, TRI uh, 3D, um, which was super helpful. And we very quickly established that this um, uh, frame wasn't doing anything for us. It wasn't supporting the castle. Um, and what it was doing was was forming more of a den um, inside the castle. So that encouraging people to actually use it as a space um, uh, for so unauthorized and, and uh, unsociable behavior. Um, so, uh, oh yes, and I, the most important person I haven't I mentioned yet is um, a fellow called Raymond Kelly, who works with us at Cora Consulting Engineers. And you can see all the scratchy notes are mine and the much uh, neater, um, more decisive things of Raymond. Um, but we, we both looked at the castle together, took different aspects, came together, discussed, looked at things that concerned us or we couldn't understand. Um, and you know, developed our thoughts um, in that way. And then also, of course, we were actually on site with the architects as well as, um, and the um, archeologists. So there, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of development of ideas, um, what had gone wrong with them, um, what we might do to put them right, et cetera. So even early on, we were starting just even initial site visits, thinking about where we might want patches plates, sock anchors, um, new lintels, et cetera. Um, we then, um, very soon after our first visit, um, needed to put a report together because that, I suppose, um, informs, you know, initial cost plans, um, et cetera, and also um, assists um, the client body in deciding what areas to prioritise. So obviously this section, the recommendations, is um, uh, really, really important. Um, and we are usually frequently split it into um, phases, immediate, medium, medium and longer term, uh, based on, on the sort of risk and the stability aspects of it, because um, that really helps concentrate people's minds on what needs to be done and um, also what is possible. Um, so then then obviously we're, we're developing our drawings. Um, we um, go into a bit more detail about what is needed. Um, and so during this process, 7L were coordinating the extent of works while we worked up the technical details, always with the intention to keep as much original construction in, in place, minimize any rebuild or addition, and give this building a helping hand. Um, so identifying the methodologies and material types um, that will last the longest um, and um, uh, give the best presentation as well. So here's some of our development, also recommended sequence of works we often add to our drawings. Um, it, it helps the thought process of what is actually required in the repair and I believe is actually super useful to the um, uh, contractor as well in trying to price the works um, and indeed the QS in putting, putting the initial build together. And in some places, um, we couldn't get up to actually see parts of the structure so that we didn't have any hoist for um, height for hire on this particular um, building at that stage. So we, if you like, assumed the worst in some cases um, to make sure that that was um, priced in. So for instance, this chimney, um, we um, asked for pricing for it to be rebuilt. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. Also, we would have identified um, storage of, uh, you know, stockpiles of stone that might be on site, um, and, um, and and then also specifying vegetation removal as well. So identifying all of that in the sequence. Um, and I just uh, might hand over to you now, Peter, for a little bit. We were awarded this contract in, I think it was sometime in January, and as you know, then the lockdown happened. And uh, as a contractor, we said, what do we want to do? Uh, we didn't know how long the lockdown was going to last. Um, so a couple of weeks went by, and I would say with great help uh, from uh, Galway City Council uh, with National Parks and Wildlife, we were allowed in to site just before the uh, nesting season was the 1st of March. So we went into site the last week of February uh, to clear the vegetation. And um, from a contract's point of view, that was absolutely a uh, tremendous help when we went on site back in May when the lockdown lifted. So we got all the vegetation uh, cleared. It, it also gave you a better view of the walls that 
especially the East War, where you really couldn't see it. it was, that was quite overgrown. Um, so we cleared the vegetation, removed it, and we treated the uh, castle walls um, with a hoist in that week as well. Then we, sp we, we, we sprayed the walls very, very carefully. Um, so that knowing that when we come back to site, hopefully everything will be dead and it will be quite easy to remove the vegetation. Um, they, I suppose. So I clicked on this. Quick. Yeah, the main, I suppose the main, our main concern then, we lockdown lifted and we, uh, so I go back to the uh, clearing. While, while, when the vegetation was, was removed, there was a lot of biohazards on site, uh, primarily syringes and uh, rubbish. Again, that was carefully uh, removed and disposed of. And then we went off site and we didn't know when we would be back. So you might just move on to the next slide, please, Lisa. Yeah, we, 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 got, we got on site, I think it was the 10th of May. And um, thankfully, all the vegetation had, had uh, died back. Uh, on the walls. So one of the first things we did was to do your, there was, I think it was three or four samples with, uh, called up on the bill of quantities for um, different types of mortar. Um, so we carried out the samples um, and um, we introduced some, some of our own aggregates that we used in previous uh, jobs. So we ended up probably having six or seven samples uh, for each, for the design team to view. Um, also, uh, the initial before the scaffolding went up as well, along with carrying out the uh, the, the the sample panels under uh, archaeological supervision, we were able to just remove any loose stones around the perimeter uh, of the building or the base of the walls, um, um, store them on pallets and move them just down to a corner on the, on the site out of out of our way. Again, you mentioned a the man there earlier on, Jim Higgins. He was a great assistance to us as well in identifying a lot of these stones around the ground, which some which were relevant to the castle and others which were irrelevant to the castle. Obviously, they were stored there from pre from, from other jobs. Um, the site was secure. Thankfully, it, it had an existing palisade fence around it. Um, it was a live um, park, uh, quite busy at times. Um, I would also say that it was used a, a lot by um, a short group of students uh, going to the university. Um, we realized later on that in the project when, when our, a lot of our health and safety signs uh, or permanent ones started disappearing. Um, I'm sure it wasn't uh, any uh, engineering students who were to blame for that. But um, you know, we looked at we looked in at, uh, at um, temporary signage which was put out in the morning and taken taken back in in the evening. So we, it was the, before we started. There was a traffic management plan um, done up. Uh, it was. Um, uh, we were con we were concerned about access and egress to the site. It was, as I said, at times it was busy. Um, we looked at different options. So what we kind of did was we looked at our suppliers, our subcontractors, and um, what materials were needed on site. Um, so we come up with any deliveries would be coordinated between the um, supplier. Um, to kind of get a rough date and time, we would meet them at the gate, open the gate, and the spotter then would walk the, the truck, be it our own lorries, or else the supplier's lorry or subcontractor's lorry coming come in into site. So I think we, we, had a, we had a small team. I think our, you know, we, once we got a routine going um, and everybody knew what was required in terms of access and egress, it, it, it worked quite well. Um, so going back to the aggregates, um, I think if you move on to the next slide then, he picked, we did an, a number of, of, of uh, samples. Um, I don't know if they're shown on this slide. I think, I think there's one or two further up. Okay. Yeah, and we, we numbered them. Um, I think if you move up, sorry again. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, so there, there's some here. Yeah. Yes. So we would have carried out five or six sample panels, uh, numbered them. We'd been very careful as well in you know the time of year, weather. It was getting warmer, um, just just missed the the, the 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 panels, the samples down. You know, a couple of times a day, uh, covering them in hessian, and um, just letting them cure naturally as best they could. And I think you uh, you come up with um, a, a, a a panel that you liked. Um, it, that had a different sand than what we originally proposed, the sand that we proposed that we've used in previous projects, which was a Finnegan sand. So he came up with um, a mix of one NHL 3.5 round tower, one kibbled quick lime, and five aggregate, which was three and a half sand, and one and a half of the Wexford pebbles. Um, as you can see, I think it, the, the pebbles work well. It's, it blended in. It's, it's, um, they, they, yourself and uh, uh, Sylvia from the uh, Seven Mill Arctic seem to be very happy with it, and I think it's, it's worked well. Um, if you go back to the previous slides. Yeah, I'll go back there a bit. Back, yeah. We didn't really talk about that yeah. one, Peter. Yeah. yeah. So what we did then, we started after panels, after some panels were done, we elected for an, a, a full scaffolding externally and internally and that incorporated, I think we had seven lifts, seven lifts of two meter intervals on Trillin. And we had almost complete access all around on most ends there. There was a couple of levels where you couldn't, you just have to go up to the next level and walk around. Um, I think this really enabled everything to be, once the scaffolding was complete, this enabled it yourselves and the architects to really have a good look at the fabric and structure of the building. As you can see, everything, every area was accessible. Um, it's, it's, we could see what was stable or what was unstable. Um, everything was quite good. I suppose the main, the main unstable section really was just the relief and arch on the east, east elevation. So that was the first thing we, um, we, we recorded very, very carefully. Um, photographed it, numbered it, and dismantled it very carefully, left on the scaffolding and rebuilt it back exactly as it was. So that was that was really the main area that was unstable. Um, to our surprise, you, you mentioned previously, the chimney was um, in the bill of quantities to be taken down to, to a stable base and rebuilt, but on uh, getting up there, the chimney was actually quite quite good. Um, the the top there was a few loose stones, so it was agreed that we wouldn't uh, uh, demolish the chimney; that we would reseat any of them loose stones. Um, the limestone, which were very important, the ledges were there's a few of them loose. They were decided to um, um, stain use stainless steel dowels, put them back exactly in their in their place, and Reseat the, any of the loose top stones at the top of the chimney and flaunch, flaunt, consolidate, clean it, flaunch it, and consolidate it as it was. And I think that worked very, very well for 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 um, everybody. Um, you can see, and if you sorry, Elise, if you go back to that slide, the 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 bar to sand there on the um, west northwest corner. Again, when that was uh, with the scaffolding, and it after it was all cleaned down, that was in quite good condition. So really there was, there was less work there to be done than what was specified because it was very, very stable. So again, deep cleaning, uh, consolidating and uh, flaunching that particular area. Um, you might ask like there was area where, where there was omissions then and you know the, um, there was a very, very detailed bill of quantities with each of these castles, um, which was really, really helpful. And I must say that Sylvia was very, very diligent in her approach to additions and omissions. You know, uh, I can say a lot of stuff kind of, you know, worked out, panned out, you know, where we would have work not carried out and what was saved could be brought forward and used on other areas that were unforeseen or her extra work was carried out. Um, that picture again just shows you the on the bottom right slide there. That is the um, 
relieve an arch on that east side that we re rebuilt um, at the external view and there's an internal view there as well from with the flaunching on the uh, wall caps there so uh, again the top right one there is again where we insert it um, um, on that ledge again that was cleaned out we you know we 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 insert it um, bricks and we put a shelter court over that just to show that it was it was, it was a, 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 a modern um, or a 21st century um, uh, repair so that we'd know that you know that was that wasn't them um, originally there so it was it was where a wooden uh, wall plate had rotted where out the wood, where the yeah. wooden wall plate was there correct yeah. you might just yeah okay these are obviously some of the sample panels again close up of the different uh, lime mixes. And as I said, they, you, you pick the one with the uh, Finnegan sand and the round tower um, lime with, uh, along with the quick lime mix. You might go on to, yeah. This is the, um, the chimney that was uh, meant to be demolished. Um, so it was decided to um, just to clean, clean that chimney down um, cons and consolidate and repoint any of the stone tops of this chimney. Um, use and we like any anywhere there was ledges around that we 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 used small salvage stones as pinnings, and flaunched it. Um, we replicated the um, flange detail at the base of the chimney. There you can see there just where your, where your cursor is. Mm -hmm. Um, again, using salvage stones and lime mortar, and at all times to leave the historic limestone ledges, which you can see there in a couple of areas, intact. And this this chimney became very important because there was an area there where um, there was, um, if you want the next slide, yeah, there was yeah. a decorative coating with a checkboard pattern was discovered. So he. Um, the discovery program were brought in to record this by laser scanning or 3D scanning, whatever you want to call it. And that was recorded in minute detail, as you can see. And after it was scanned, then it was decided that the chimney would be um, um, covered in a shelter coat. If you move on to the next slide now, you can see the shelter coat. So that was, again, a mix was, was picked for that, which basically was in HL2 round tower white with about 12 uh, gauges of water and a very small amount of finely sifted sand. And that was applied over a number of days. And I think it got about 10 to 12 coats in total. Again, that just shows that it's a modern intervention and it, it uh, protects the, fab the, 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 the fabric of the chimney. Um, you can see the view there from looking in from the south side. Um, again, there was on the west wall there, you can see there was three buttresses built and shelter quarters just to highlight that these were a modern intervention uh, to support the, the, obviously there was three windows, uh, jams there, they were, they were unstable. Uh, he, he had um, a design there for patches plates and those other ideas looked at maybe uh, box section supports um, again with meetings and I think with the clients it was decided against using any more stainless steel um, support framework on that wall. And yeah, I, 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 I feel um, slightly sorry for you Peter because you were on the um, receiving end of quite a lot of design discussion during your right. contract um, <laughs> um, whilst we went to and yeah. fro um, trying to save as much of these gables as possible um, yeah. whilst us um, being able to justify that they wouldn't um, fall down on somebody's head. Yeah. Um, so this, um, there was a lot of patience um, from Cunningham Marine, but we, we tried, we hit it head on and, and got through it um, pretty quickly. So um, yeah. Raymond there um, looked at a couple of different solutions, um, really because we were, I suppose we were answering the questions from um, the department as well as Galway County uh, City Council mm. um, as to what could be, and uh, yeah. And anyway, we ended up with this solution one way or another <laughs> after all the ins and outs. Mm. Um, but Peter, sorry, I'll okay. hand back to you. Um, there was a, you can see there where your cursor is as well, there was um, 
they went on that west wall on the south side. There was an existing mullion that was quite precarious. It, it, was, it was cracked. So there was a, um, some stainless steel box section uh, mullion inserted behind the, the stone mullion, along with a stainless steel angle um, lintel on the in, uh, inside the, 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 the head of the window that was there. Um, again, if there's a few other windows, I don't know if they're shown on the slides, there's a few other uh, windows with, with stainless steel uh, lintels inserted as well. Um, there's an overview of, uh, from the south side of the, um, the chimneys on the north wall. They, they got um, substantially repaired as well. The relieving arches were consolidated above them and new um, limestone lintels inserted there as well. Um, on the right hand side, you can see the um, launching details on the slope of the north gable walls, um, all uh, cleaned down, um, consolidated, um, pointed, pinnings, flaunched, everything was just, um, I must say yourselves and, and, and Seven Ed were very, very particular in the flaunching that every that water would run off every aspect of the wall tops mm. to um, stop any further water ingress into the main fabric of the of the walls. Um, this is these are just at the end complete with scaffolding down. There's the window I talked about earlier on with the existing mullion that was that's that was in situ. Uh, it close up it was quite um, damaged, cracked. Um, so these the stainless steel support was discreetly put in behind that with yeah. the with the with the uh, stainless steel uh, lintels. Um, so this this is very much um, sorry for um, interjecting there, Peter, but this is very much um, one of these cases where um, it was little as necessary. Uh, so it might have been viewed in in other um, conservation works that actually to rebuild the full window mm. might would actually have been easier because we could have got a lintel right the way across to new masonry this side. But Correct. we only had half a window, so Correct. we came up with a, a sort of a, a little bit of additional structure mm. on the inside mm. um, to allow us to retain just half a window and not mm. a full window. Mm. Um, so that was that was why we ended up with with this rather than a lot of rebuild. You can see again on some on this uh, um, west elevation where on the lower window there there was a new um, mullion um, 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 carved and inserted. Uh, again, if you I, I, on the on the east side, there was um, a lovely window there that had some um, fragments of the jams in situ, uh, maybe half a sill, some of the lintels. Um, oh, Jim sorry, Higgins, sorry, that one. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one there. Uh, I must say, Jim Higgins was very, very helpful in. He had some fragments of that particular window in storage across the road in the waterworks. And it was decided, I think we had over 60% or there, thereabouts of, of the, the, the window. So it was decided to continue on and make new uh, fragments to join the, the, the old and the new and put, put, put that window back together. And, and the, again, the, the masons that we um, just, uh, worked with, uh, go with stone, um, were very, very meticulous and, and, and extremely good in this sort of work. They have worked previously on castles, so they had good experience on it. Um, we did meet a number of other um, stonemasons, uh, subcontractors, before we commenced work on site. Um, we went to their, to their workplace, we looked at their previous work. Um, we met then with Gaul with Stone, and we looked at their previous work um, previous castles they worked on. One in particular was Clergawa Castle. And we just felt that um, they were a good team to work with, uh, along with, with our own in-house masons. And it, it worked very, very well. Um, again, their workshop was close uh, to the city. So where we were working away on the, the repointing of the walls, there maybe two or three there operatives will go off their, their, their stone carvers and they could be working ahead in the workshop. Um, so pro working with, with Scalva Stone, working to a program, meeting them every day or what, you know, just looking ahead, 
what did we need, what was critical. Um, we had a type program. We had a program for about 10 weeks here, and it was 10 weeks on the nose from when we started in May to completion. So it was good teamwork all around with, the, with, with everybody that was involved, and uh, it really worked well, um, as you can see. We've looked at that one there now, yeah. Well, thanks, Peter. Um, so, yeah, that it, it seemed very quick. And also, I suppose um, I was going down sometimes and Raymond was going down other times. So, um, yeah. you know, that I might not have visited for six weeks. And then yeah. then you go and see an amazing amount of work um, that's already yeah. been carried out because Raymond mm. hit the, the visit in between. Um, and uh, so anyway, so I'm going to talk a bit about the next castle now. So we'll go back to um, the design stage there um, of, for this one and, and our thoughts um, to do with this one. Um, and, and just, oh, I suppose, to mention um, that this was all done under um, the public um, works contract um, five for minor works. Um, the, the lads, um, County Marine, would have been tendered via e-tenders. Um, so you know, it's it's the documentation and level of documentation was was had to be had to be pretty good, and I think that, um, as Peter said, really helps on site. Um, so this um, one, sorry, I'll just go back there. Um, this one is in the middle of a housing estate. There you go. There's the housing estate. There's the castle. Um, well, it's actually in the middle of, of um, Merlin Park um, uh, Woods. Um, but ringed by by houses, um, much visited. Um, you can see all sorts of little red trails here of some of the paths through the through the site. Um, this um, uh, is was actually the architect's favourite um, castle, um, just because of the level of detailing, which is exquisite in places, um, and it's just a real treat of a castle. Um, uh, it lost its hall um, at some stage, um, and it um, was when we came to it. Um, full of um, pigeon um, and pigeon guano all the way up the spiral stairs, all the way down into the, the basement. Um, um, much to uh, Raymond's amusement, I um, actually squealed uh, one time during the, the, our first site visit because I nearly stood on a, a flightless pigeon. Um, anyway, um, one of um, Peter's first jobs was getting rid of all of that when, when he got to site. But when we were looking at it, um, we had to look through all of that a dark, dank, um, pigeon infested spaces. Um, with this castle, we actually had a drone survey of the top of the walls, so we could actually um, minutely sort of interrogate those. And I remember um, actually poring over um, drone footage and, and drone photos with Sylvia online, um, trying to work out what was going on and trying to get the right specification for bits. So uh, we used a lot of photos um, in our um, uh, compilation of our documentation, which I think, again, when you've got an existing structure in a, a very, an unusual um, existing structure in its own very unique state of dereliction, um, I think photographs are super, super handy. Um, and especially then if you can annotate them to, to say what you're trying to, um, to get at, which is, for instance, you know, we felt that all these um, saddle stones uh, were missing and had to be reinstated, um, that some of these pockets were erosion, but other pockets were putt logs or beam holes and therefore shouldn't be infilled um, so that we don't lose the interpretation. Um, and then also making assumptions as to how much of this had to be rebuilt. So, for instance, we allowed and said that a top 300 mil of all of these gable walls needed to be rebuilt, um, just so that we have a decent bit in the pricing there um, as well. Um, and that, you know, for instance, this little um, bit of wall needed to be removed and rebuilt afterwards, et cetera. So this is a, a diagram showing all of, all of um, um, that things. And then there were some interesting details at, at other areas. So some of our hand sketches would, would have been included in on the, um, information as it went out to tender, just just ways of trying to explain and trying to get across uh, what was required. This um, fireplace um, actually developed a lot of discussion on site. Each one of these castles had one element, um, if not more, where there was detailed debate and perhaps a change from what we had specified at the tender stage. So we had come from the aspect of do as min as less as as um, possible, um, but only uh, but as much as is needed. So um, we had said, look, let's infill these gaps here. Let's replace this corbel um, and repair it, and put in 
what we've shown in, in yellow, and then um, in, include a stainless steel armature behind to try and hook up this row of uh, relieving arch um, stones. The, the, the main arch has gone. So this is a kind of some of these pictures. So what we were left with was, if you like, the relieving arch stone and the main arch had, had disappeared, but what we felt we needed was at least this part of, of the stone. Um, you'll see where we ended up um, at the at the end of the day. But just look at this detailing. Isn't it amazing? Um, and these curved heads, these are very thin bits of stone. Um, um, well, at their outer edge, they're given to be thin, but they're actually sort of probably slightly bigger than that. And then we had a complicated area here. So remember this picture because, um, sorry, there's actually, um, when we get to the later uh, details, you'll see um, amazing transformation here. But, but very clear as to where we've been. Um, all this space up here is uh, what's called the solar, um, which would have been the top, the, the fancy room of the house um, and the main entertainment space um, in the original um, iteration. Um, the roof had gone over this and um, a, a concrete screed had been laid over this, sorry, there's a masonry vault immediately under this. Um, so this, has, this became the new roof and we had to do some work to make it work properly. Um, as as the the new roof to the building, um, and the other issue in this um, castle was um, the spiral stairs. It looked like um, a herd of cattle had been up and down it um, at least five times. Um, so here's some of our um, uh, documentation: uh, red, replace; um, yellow might be able to repair it in situ with stitching, and green, okay. Um, so we went, we investigated and looked at every single tread and made a decision on each tread and tried to rationalize it so that it could actually be properly priced. Um, and then um, the Galway Stone were absolutely fabulous at doing the, the, the orange bits, you know, well, and the red bits, but, but particularly the orange bits, their judgment, you know, the, um, this is, and this is where um, uh, skilled stonemasons on site I mean, it meant we didn't have to stand and have a discussion about every single tread. We got the intention out there, uh, had the discussion about the first uh, set of repairs, and then they said, go away. We know what we're doing. And they did. Um, and, they, and they got it all sorted out. Uh, so now the stairs is, is uh, serviceable. Um, uh, just, um, just to refer you, if there's actually a fantastic little video that Galway City Council put together um, for Heritage Week last year. Um, and you can get it on that reference, but also if you Google Galway Heritage Week and castles, it will come up as well. It's about mm, seven minutes long or so, has Peter in it, has myself, has Fergal, the architect, um, and um, uh, Jim Higgins, and it's um, it's really good footage and uh, really nicely put together as well. Uh, so Peter, I think I'm going to hand over to you now. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, this was, a, a, again, a very, very interesting project. Uh, in a, in a live park, but the difference here, we felt as contractors, was, it was surrounded by a large uh, number of housing estates. So our, our main concern before we started here was um, obviously access and egress to the site. Again, we we're going through a, a, a busier probably park than, than Terryland. And also our ma main concern was when the scaffolding went up that you, you know, scaffolding attracts kids, you know, ladders up the top of the castle. So at the beginning, before we start, we looked at it, um, we, we, we met uh, our in-house and we decided that we would go with uh, uh, box profile. We invested in box profile um, sheeting. We actually made it 2.5 meters high um, hoarding. And on top of this, we, about 200 mil above that, we added in a top rail at four by two. Um, so we treated that with uh, um, anti-climb paint just as a deterrent and because we were very, very conscious of the amount of children in the locality that, that all want to uh, be up on top of the scaffolding or a king of the castle, as they say. So um, the first thing we did was go in and uh, erect the hoarding and um, also we hired private security in this, in this location as well, just up the, uh, as I said, with kids and access. And uh, that worked really well. And um, um, again, we had a barrier. The access was through the, through the uh, walkways uh, to this site. So there was a barrier that was um, locked. Again, coordination with uh, subcontractors, suppliers, our own um, 
deliveries from um, from head office. So we would send out a, 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 a signal man or a flag man to meet, open the gate and just walk these um, deliveries to site and, you know, carefully reverse them in, uh, unload the goods and um, again, and accompany them out to the barrier and then lock it after you. So I, I suppose, you know, as a small team, again, we all got to know from drilling how, how things worked. Um, and it's, it worked well here again. Um, the, 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 the same as Thrill, and we decided to scaffold the whole uh, external envelope of the castle. Uh, this one, we were, I think we had um, 10, 10 levels, which is quite high. Um, an 11th level then burrows up to two access to the two gables. Um, we did look at scaffolding the top floor there. You can just see on the, the, the slide there on the left hand side to, for access to clean and, and repair and repoint the internal walls of the gables. Um, we felt scaffolding would be quite heavy. We didn't really know the condition at only again. We would really know the condition of the vault ceiling that was below that floor. Um, we looked at maybe a lattice beam uh, across from uh, east to west. But we just felt that with, that would be in the way of the uh, drainage stones and inserting the new saddle stones that were proposed to put all around the, the east and west walls there. So we just decided that the best option there was two light, very light aluminium towers, one on the, uh, the north, internal north gable and one on the internal south gable, just to allow um, cleaning down of the gables for your inspection, because you, you, could see, you could see quite a lot from the external scaffolding. Um, so that again, uh, I would just go back to say that um, program here was was very important. And we, while we were working on Trillin, we could get over after the ecologists had, had completed their final uh, survey. I think that was around the end of May. We got in, I think, the first week in June and treated as much vegetation on that castle ahead of our start date, which was in August there. So again, that was a great help just to get the, the vegetation treated. When we got to site and it, was, it, had, it had died back, it was easy, easy to take out. So it was a great help. Um, if the slide there you're looking at there is, is the, that's the vault ceiling underneath the top of the second floor. Um, that was uh, raked out, um, consolidated, pinned and repointed. Um, there was works, there was another vault ceiling in the basement Lisa, as you remember, mm -hmm. uh, no, no works were, was allowed to be done in the basement because there was the, um, the brown long eared bats were identified as roosting in, the, in, in, in that particular part of the um, castle. So in one way, if the savings there, I, some of that vaulted ceiling in the basement was to be repointed. And I think it was the overall 50 square meters from memory that the two vaulted ceilings but not by not doing the, the, the repairs to the vault ceiling in the basement, it allowed then that all that second floor vault ceiling could be consolidated and repointed in total from you know the omission from not doing the basement. So it, it worked well in some ways, you know. Um, if you want to the next slide, again, there was some um, very intricate repair work carried out by Galway Stone. You can see there some of the uh, new transom inserted there. And some of the uh, samples of our um, lime, lime mortar uh, repointing. Um, that's a view of the uh, upper floor again. As I said, you can see the towers there. They worked. They worked well. Uh, it gives great access. We weren't worried then about temporary works with scaffolding, as I said, going across lashes beams and our, our loadings on the floor. And uh, you can see a before and after after uh, view. And I think it came out uh, quite well. Yeah, there was quite a lot of reconstruction was, here, yeah. um, and that was about keeping the pigeons out because this mm. has got a grill on it as well. So mm. keeping the water mm. off of the stairs. So mm. you see the spiral stairs coming up here. Mm. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's local repair. So repairing mm. um, areas of, of missing stone, but leaving old beam holes. Mm. Um, um, so just being kind of quite careful about what we repaired. That was a later infill. So we actually, and it wasn't mm. doing anything for us structurally. So we actually took it out. So just kind of making those decisions and giving better interpretation yeah. 
um, and a stabilizing as well. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the, the saddle stones, new, brand new saddle stones that have gone on to cover all these, all these joints. Um, I would just say that the, 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 um, when we started, we obviously knew with the scaffolding would require the uh, use of a teleporter, but we found that a teleporter would be plowing up the site, but yet we still had to have it. So we kind of planned ahead when we were in drilling as well, along with the, um, with the stonemasons, that what was critical, what was needed to get up, why we, why we had the uh, teleporter on site for probably a week. So the, the saddle stones were, again, um, program was important. We looked ahead, we got measurements. We, we, they were started well weeks before we started in Merlin. So while the scaffolding was being erected, then we could get final measurements. And just before the teleporter left, we were able to um, get them large stones up on the Loden Bay and up on top of the walls. So it really worked well. And um, then after that, we just went back into our, our, um, our, um, scaffold and hoist just to bring up our lime mortars on a daily basis and so there's no plowing up the site no no damage done which we were very conscious of and uh, again then towards the end when we were, we were had all the externals uh, repointing completed on the top of the walls um, we said to our our stone masons like the the, 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 the the steps you you talked about earlier on in the spiral stairs um, there was, I think, five or six there. Yeah, uh, I think there were number four. There were sixty-four steps, I think, in total on the spiral stairs. Oh, yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, and um, we had, I think, there was four or five at around level forty-two to forty-five that had to be um, taken out and and uh, replaced. So again, we knew this, the the teleport was coming back onto site. Um, could could they could they um, have them manufactured so that we can get them up and over and down left in that top floor so it was easier to get them down the stairwell than get them up at that level and that worked well because the lower ones you can see in the left hand slide they were they were at the lower level at first floor so they weren't as bad to uh, get up so again co um, cooperation with and coordination with with the um, with the stonemasons was critical in just getting this project within a 12 week program that we allowed and it worked, it worked very well. I might step on to the next, yeah. There's, um, that is the West Wall again, uh, compliments to Jim Higgins, who you can see that window there. There was some fragments that he had in storage in the basement. Um, along with another uh, window on the south elevation. And um, so between what we had and uh, recarving the missing pieces, you can see in the right slide, it all came together. And I think it looked very, very well, along with the uh, gargoyle underneath that window, which was originally proposed to be a, a stainless steel gargoyle. But the, there was a gargoyle that we found on the south elevation. And this one here on the west was, was a, a, an exact copy of what was there on the south side. And that was that was put in instead of the uh, stainless steel uh, gargoyle spout. So, so again, I suppose that's um, where um, the purest conservationists, myself and Fergal, were saying, yeah. well, this is a new intervention because yeah. this area behind was never a roof and we want a stainless steel one. And then the stonemasons and the client as well, um, picking up on a previous mm. detail elsewhere mm. and saying, no, we'll have a new stone one. Um, mm. In the end, you know, the likes of myself and Fergal back down on this sort of thing. What's important is having a gargoyle because it's draining all of the uh, new solar floor. floor and, we, yeah. and, and the reason this vegetation had got hold before was because the water was just running out, running down the face of the wall. So mm. we really felt that we needed to throw the water off of the wall. Um, so um, it's doing a job. Um, and that's the important mm. thing um, at the end of the mm. day. So Peter, you had some great fun with these lots. We did, you? we did. Uh, uh, the college was identified, obviously, along with the bats. There was um, uh, swifts uh, identified in, in, in two or three areas on the external fabric of the building. You can see a um, swift box there on the bottom left corner that was uh, installed just before we dropped the scaffolding. Um, any swift nests in the walls were identified, they were marked in chalk scaffolding uh, boards were kept away from them. And, you know, 
with toolbox talks, I think everyone was very conscious of just protecting any of the identified nests, not to disturb them. And uh, at the end, as I said, we, in, we installed some um, swift boxes, uh, a Kestrel box, you can see there in the top left hand corner. And there was some um, additional bat boxes installed on the, um, on the ledge, just on the south elevation at the, uh, at the gables. Um, on the right hand side there, then that is the stainless steel um, gate that was installed at the top of the um, spiral stairs that leads you into the uh, top floor. There was quite, as you mentioned earlier, at least there was quite extensive um, stonework done around that uh, particular area. I, there was a half, half an arch. There you can see part a new part of the arch yeah, on the left hand side. New there, and, ex yeah. original here. Yeah. And that was, you know, there was there was some beautiful um 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 masonry work done there in in matching that uh, half arch exactly replica of the piece that was on the opposite side, and it really looked and blended in very very well. There is um a view of the west elevation um scaffolding down uh, at all repointed at uh, wall tops all consolidated you can see some of the side the top of the saddle stones there on the which look look very well and um overall again it was it was a tight program we'd allowed about 12 weeks in merlin um we 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 had we were ninety five percent complete. I think in the in the within that twelve week there was some bits of work left internally which didn't require scaffolding, and uh, just it all worked very very well again with good coordination and looking ahead and planning with with the various suppliers and subcontractors. Yeah, and what was um what was great was that um at the end of each castle project you had the next mm -hmm. one kind of ready for the inspection so that we were doing yeah. our a real crunch time yeah. first inspection yeah. with the full team, yeah. um, you know, with the scaffold in place. Not the not sorry, not the very initial inspection because obviously we've done that a year before. But but yeah. but the the on site inspection to agree the extent of works. Um, or all our pretty much our mortar examples have been covered on the Tyrolean one. We weren't changing it much as we mm -hmm. we came through, but we were asking ourselves the question again. But at least if you like, the, the, that was the beauty of having the three projects there. There was a certain. Um, you know, learning and um, um, consideration that had been done oh, on the first project that yeah. got carried forward to the other three project, the mm. other two projects. Mm. Um, this this one, um, um, we did not know what we were looking at when we first came to it. Um, and um, what was very interesting was after we our very first visit um, back in 2020, Fergal um, from 7L asked, all of us, the other architect, uh, Sylvia, myself, Raymond, um, and Frank, uh, Coyne, the um, archaeologist, um, to pick a favourite castle. Um, luckily, all castles got picked across the group. Um, Merlin was uh, the one we've just looked at, was the architect's favourite. Tyrolan um, uh, was the archaeologist's favourite. And this one was Raymond's and my favourite. And I just kind of went back over the reasons why the other day. And um, this if you like, presents the biggest challenges structurally. And we also didn't know quite what challenges it was presenting. Um, and it is the castle that keeps on giving. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll tell you how far we got with this one. So as you can see, there wasn't much to see to begin with, except that, that it was a bit like a Swiss cheese um, with, with lots of green uh, growth on it. Um, perhaps a blue Swiss cheese, um, I don't know, um, um, a lot of holes in, in the masonry. And, and not only are we looking at fenestration window holes, but also there's flues running up a lot of this, all of this bit here is flues. Um, beautiful little harbour on the site as well, but just mm -hmm. this extensive vegetation growth. growth. Um, this castle was occupied for the longest and had the most alterations. Um, I think actually the townhouse might possibly be earlier than 16th century, but say the tower house was built in the 16th century, um, fortification extended to fortified house in the 17th century, Georgianized in the um, 18th century, and then uh, um, additional bits in the 19th century, and then burnt down in 1910. So it, it was um, de-roofed most recently of all the three castles and had uh, uh, more alterations. Um, 
This was it in June 2020 when we came and visited again to check um, uh, our to or te test our tender documentation. Um, this had happened to it and somebody had been along in between times and I went back over the photos and these holes definitely weren't drilled um, when we were there in 2020. So unbeknownst to us, somebody had, had come and started our job um, or Peter's job for him a long time mm. um, before Peter got anywhere near Thank it. I, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you tackle the south face. It's pity they didn't do the same to the north and yeah, <laughs> the yeah, west. Yeah. Um, but um, we don't know what they used. So of course, you know, that, that was somewhat of a hazard as well. It's like presenting a contractor with some sort of herbicide on site that we hadn't got a clue as to what it was um yeah. but obviously they drilled holes and poured it in but you can see just how effective um mm -hmm. it had been um so uh, it, it actually allowed us to see a lot more look look at the difference between that and and that you can suddenly start seeing seeing things so for this project um we felt actually we we couldn't tackle the whole thing and the better thing to do would be actually unveil the building and let it describe itself to everybody. So we set about specifying um, vegetation removal, big time, um, fencing it off so the public couldn't wander through the whole thing because that's what you could do. And it's just it was so hazardous um, that it really needed a fence around the, around the whole building. Um, and then what we did was we allowed for some emergency propping, um, you know, some galvanized steel beams, some macro props, just to catch some of the openings. So at least that got priced. And then we also allowed for a small bit of masonry works as well, so that we had that discipline um, priced into, um, into these works. Um, mm -hmm. So these are some of our um, drawings. So vegetation removal. This, uh, we would issue out two different specifications for vegetation removal. One is where there's no masonry. I know you probably can't read this on your screens, but this is for when there's no masonry works envisaged because there's a slightly different level of, of vegetation control. You don't want to actually tug all the roots out when you're not immediately going back there um, to do the masonry works. So you kind of need to let the mason pick out the um, the roots so that he knows where all the stones have come from. Um, we would specify um, some root killing of the yeah. bigger stumps, so at least the process is started, but not um, pulling and ripping the ivy off. Um, as it turns out, um, um, and Peter will go through this, um, Cunning Marine could do a bit more than we expected because there was quite a lot of smooth render underneath this still. Um, so so this is this was part of our drawings as well um, for the, the for the purposes of uh, by, by bespoke fencer, um, but just showing the layout to access gates because the, the, the site's in two halves by virtue of these two walls. So um, to actually get um, spider hoists in the future, whatever you need to access here and you need to access here. Um, rather than palisade fencing, we specified um, the um, uh, welded mesh um, fencing, fencing uh, just a little bit more attractive. Um, and that's that's kind of how it got presented to Peter. So I'll hand you back mm. to Peter now. Thanks, Lisa. Um, as you've mentioned, Lisa, the scope of works here was limited, um, mainly entailed uh, a new security fence uh, five meters out around the bit from the base of the castle, uh, ivy removal, and as you said, some limited uh, propping to some oaks internally and a small amount of uh, rebuilding, uh, point repointing. Um, I suppose the one thing here, it was there was a, a zero dig, uh, no dig allowed for any of the posts for the uh, Fencing, so it was proposed to use the one and a half ton uh, Kelly blocks, um, which um, worked well. Um, the second thing was critical here, I think, from a contract's point of view, was plant selection. Um, we went with a, our telescopic uh, boom lift was a tracked one, um, which we found was very, very more uh, much more stable than. Um, than a, than a tire one, if we used it on tires, again, tires then would have been plowing up the ground. And uh, the spider, the articulated um, spider lifts that, that we use internally was critical as well. Access was very, very limited to get any sort of lift into the building. Again, we had to be very careful of thresholds and doing any damage to the jams as for entry to the castle and exit. 
Um, so plant section was critical here. I think it, wor it worked very, very well. You can see in the picture that large track. Sorry, Peter. Yeah. That large track boom really, really worked well. Um, so very, very carefully, we, 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 we started trimming back the ivy which with hedge trimmers. And as you mentioned, uh, with the smooth kind of um, plaster that was uh, on the uh, castle walls, it, the, the roots really hadn't penetrated through the walls. So as we were um, trimming up the, uh, the top of the ivy, we started just gently taking it back and it just very nicely, um, thankfully peeled away right down to the ground and any roots or area roots that were left, we would have drilled them and, and, and treated them uh, accordingly. But I think we got quite a substantial amount of the ivy removed from the external facade, which gave you a much greater view of the future repairs that we require. Because obviously none of the windows, you couldn't really see any, any of the windows externally, yeah. how, what condition the, the relief and arches were in or any other part of it. I mean, if, there's another, if you go on a slide there, Lisa, there's an area where if yes, the left, the, the that pocket there on the, that, that was all overgrown. That mm. was very, when the ivy was removed there, as you can see, that was quite unstable. And again, uh, fair play to the design team, a quick decision was made of what, what was needed here and replicated the propping that was, that was originally specified you know, yeah. where your cursor is. That's right. So we had originally yeah. we'd specified propping yeah. here and, and here, there. yes, um, which is this one, yes. and which meant that we had, if you like, those that, those bits of Meccano in the bill. So we Correct. just we were just extending that yes. and extending that brief, yeah. um, I mean, and also your expertise. You know, you'd already deployed that expertise um, um, in this castle. So to yeah. to do it again for another yeah. bit, and and yeah. these these are then bought by the contract and they stay there until yeah, yeah. the next phase yeah. oh, semi semi permanent yes <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully still, not uh, yes. too permanent <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's a small you can see the tree um the tree windows and doors on that uh, south elevation there there was new uh uh lentils inserted in there and a small bit of repairs on the uh, north internal wall yeah. and that was really yeah. the scope of the works there so well, it, and again that was what we kind of picked up at an early stage. We could actually yes. see that these heads were completely rotted out. And yeah. when you look at, um, as you go into the wall, probably a little bit more, but on the inside face of the wall, there was probably actually only a width of 200 mil or eight inches mm. forming that pier <laughs> without right. the, the timber lintels, you know, because of the rotted timber lintels. So um, yeah. installing some new precast mm. in there was, we deemed mm. pretty essential. Mm. Mm. Uh, where do you stop in a place like this, though? Um, and so I suppose that's that's where we're going to next. But Peter, yeah. you, this is your slide still. Yeah, well, I, 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 we were as contracts very conscious uh, of, of doing causing any damage to the fabric of the structure there. I mean, on the um, the west side, we found some uh, uh, from the first floor up, there was some slip that was it was covered in in in, in limestone slates some of the ivy had uh, made its way in behind the slate so we were very very careful to try and cut that ivy below that level and then drill and plug any of the remaining veins that are vines that were left on that wall um so that we wouldn't that we wouldn't do any more damage to to the to the slates mm. um you can see there lisa on the top right corner i think that's yourself there yep and yeah. sylvia yep um again we we whatever we couldn't get removed we did our best to treat it drill it and treat it so much as we, as we could um so the the articulated boom that 15 ton i think it had a 22 meter reach really really was a great piece of plant to have selected for the ivy removal it worked very very well for us we just we could reach into place where we didn't think originally we were going to get into you know and the bottom right slide, I think, is our a picnic we had on site. Tour yeah, super, super, super contractor. If any of you who want a super contractor, <laughs> before before Christmas. Um. So that was, it was, it was yeah, yeah. It was a lim it was limited scope really of the works that the budget was limited. He, there was there was yeah. prim primarily the fence, yeah. removed the ivy and some temporary some temporary propping. 
And, and I think, and, you know, mm. that was what we specified because that's all that we could actually yeah. put our hand on our heart and say we mm. could actually do. Um, mm. So in fairness to any contractor, yeah. you know, we, we couldn't make it up. Um, yeah. So what we got I, at the end of the day is this. Yeah. You know? and um, I'm just thinking with, with just, just good toolbar talks with, the, with our, our own lads, uh, you know, on, on the eye removal there, just, just to be very, very careful. You know, I mean, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a historic building. It, it's protectors. Mm. Just, just you know, we're not, you know, just lads, just be careful. It worked very, very well. Every, you know, had respect for it. Um, yeah, and this, and this, this is that area of hanging yeah, slate that yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, and yeah. Again, we were conscious as well. I know there's a picture of a, of a teleporter on site. We had to have it for a day or two. We just realised that it was ploughing up again, so we just got rid of it and brought in a tract excavator that was was doing less damage or not ploughing up the the ground around the castle outside the fence you know so just you know just just be cautious and careful and i think plant selection is critical in certain jobs like this you know yeah and certainly i would say that um peter about you know that it was just um a joy to come down and see the site when the vegetation was being We're removed seeing, because we could yeah. safely see it because you had a spider yeah. hoist in these spaces which in i think you spaces, had to yeah. you had to dismantle and reassemble um yes. to get it through certain doorways yeah. And, and also and, then, like, and level the doorways and just you know stone up the doorways, tram over yeah. the thresholds. You know there was there was just careful careful prep work ahead of getting these hoists into the building. You know. Yeah. So I'm just going to sort of finish off now uh, just by saying that actually we've got a new tranche of works that's happening. Um. So we 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 were within budget. We were within a, a kind of adjusted time scale around COVID. Mm. Um. And now um. So and and we feel that with Tiralan and with Merlin. We've done as much as is needed for the moment. Um, this one needs some more. Um, and Galway County Co uh, City Council, sorry, I even put it, County Council in my notes, very bold. Um, Galway City Council have found some more money. Um, and then we've also applied for the CMF, Community Monuments Fund, for this year. And what is what is interesting and what it's going to, I believe, really work well for us is that under the public works contract um, the minor, for minor works, uh, you can actually... Um, increase the scope of works by up to 50%. We won't be going up to as much as 50%, but probably about 25% on what we've already done, mm -hmm. which just allows us to um, keep the same contractor, same design team and same contractor employed. So we've had a little halt for the winter. We've got some more funds in place now. Mm -hmm. And now that we can see this building, we're just about to embark on detailed designing that next phase um, of, you know, approximately 200,000 there, give or take a bit. Um, we just had our first kickoff meeting on that next phase. Um, and so we'll be um, issuing, we'll be uh, producing drawings to go for ministerial consent for these, for works to this. And that will entail, um, you can probably just, just pick up this gable um, is kind of eroding from within itself mm. um, and so is highly unstable and then also it's something that you, Peter you picked up on site was is there's a certain vulnerability to this turret um, at this end as well with its support area yeah. so we're going to home in on um, well we think actually we'll try and tackle the whole of this gable so rather than just putting putting scaffold up and just doing this bit we'll let's do all the other bits all the way up and down um, and then with this bit get up get the crucial bit and then also have a better look at all of this um area and that's going to form the scope of this next one but we're using the the the, the current contract if you like we haven't fully closed it off um we've done what we said we've set out to do but we're it's it's been extended to allow this to happen um and which means that we get the same team um and we'll go to site hopefully depending on you know everybody's availability in you know um end of april may um possibly late may to avail of the good the summer months as well um so kind of perfect timing for masonry works again um but um yeah and here here's this uh, delightful castle in in much better view um so i think i think that's that's it peter unless peter did you want to say anything else no i think i think just as you mentioned there that tourist that is the most uh unstable mm. part there mm. um mm. And it'd be a shame to to let it deteriorate or, or collapse, you yeah. know. So I Yeah, think, so we'll be tackling yeah. the oldest bit and probably the newest bit. Newest bit so. yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, right.